Welcome to today's on-demand webinar on the evaluation of beer stability. Today's presentation looks at the various types of measurements used to assess beer stability, the equipment used in that analysis, and Ashland's beverage laboratory and analysis capability, including global technical service. Haze-forming proteins are measured using the saturated ammonium sulfate precipitation limit called SASPL. This value is measured using the tonometer instrument and gives an indication of the quantity of proteins present in the beer sample. We can also measure the sensitive proteins with the tonometer using tannic acid as the reagent. This test measures the fraction of proteins that are highly haze active and readily complex for polyphenols to form haze. Chopin chill haze is a way to predetermine the stability of a beer by supercooling a beer sample down to a very cold temperature typically minus 5 to minus 8 degrees Celsius, and measuring the haze that develops as a result. This gives an indication of the future stability of the beer. On the polyphenol side, we can measure total polyphenols using a spectrophotometric method. This gives an indication of all polyphenols present in the beer sample. There are also flavonoids, which are the lower molecular weight subfraction of the total polyphenols. Tannoids are measured using a tonometer and indicate the high molecular weight polyphenols. These are the most reactive polyphenols and the most troublesome in terms of colloidal stability of the beer. Haze active proteins and polyphenols can also be measured using the PT standard portable nephilometer. Results from the nephilometer are given as a ratio between proteins and polyphenols present in the beer and gives an indication of the potential stability. The PT standard nephilometer is a portable and can be brought to a brewery location to perform on-site analysis in real time. Ashland can also employ a variety of other methods as needed, such as high-performance liquid chromatography. Typical checks for beer stability and their typical value in stable beer are listed here. Flavonoids can be expected to be present at less than 25 milligrams per liter. Total polyphenols should be less than 100 milligrams per liter. Haze polyphenols will have values greater than 50 milliliters of reagent per 100 milliliters of beer. Tannoids should be less than 12 milligrams of PVPP per liter or below detectable limits because tannoids are the most troublesome haze precursor. On the protein side, haze protein should have values greater than 50 milliliters of reagent per 100 milliliters of beer. Sensitive proteins measured using a tannic rea acid reagent should be less than 0.8 EBC at 10 milligrams per liter. What this value indicates is the amount of haze that forms after 10 milligrams per liter of tannic acid are added to the beer sample. The SASPA limit should be greater than 12 milliliters per 100 milliliters of beer. The Chopin chill haze measured in a supercooled beer sample should be less than 3 EBC. Typically, a small amount of alcohol is added to the beer sample to prevent freezing. Values outside these typical values would suggest action towards either removal of proteins or removal of polyphenols. To measure haze in a sample of beer, we use a nephilometric turbidity meter with a light scattering angle of 90 degrees. We measure beer haze at room temperature, which gives us the permanent haze, and measure total haze after cooling to zero degrees Celsius for 24 hours, which gives us the sum of both permanent haze and chill haze. The chill haze is reversible, so the total haze measurement captures both. The end of useful shelf life is typically taken as a haze value equal to or less than 2 EBC. If haze meters are not available, visual assessment against calibrated standards is possible, but this becomes subjective. Our Seagrist Lab Scat Haze Meter allows measurement of haze in the original packaging. Bottles do not have to be opened to make the measurement. This allows cycling of the beer from hot to cold to perform accelerated aging without exposing the beer to the environment. The color of the bottle has no impact on the haze measurement. This haze meter has temperature controlled capacity within the water bath to hold the samples at the desired temperature while the measurement is being made, generally at zero degrees Celsius. The tonometer instrument allows a variety of measurements for haze precursors. This is a temperature-controlled nephilometer with a syringe dosing pump for adding various reagents depending upon what is being measured. 
When tannoids are measured with this instrument, we use a soluble PVP that complexes readily with tannoids to produce haze. The amount of haze that develops can be equated to a concentration of tannoids in the beer sample. The instrument also measures sensitive proteins using a solution of tannic acid, which will selectively precipitate the proteins that are most reactive with tannic acid. The amount of haze that develops is indicative of the quantity of haze-forming proteins in the beer sample. The Chapon low temperature chill haze test gives us a fast estimate of predictive stability of the beer. This slide presents data on the correlation of tannoid levels to haze development on accelerated aging of beer. The x-axis shows the quantity of tannoids present in the beer sample, and the y-axis shows the total haze of the beer after aging. Samples were aged for four weeks at 37 degrees Celsius, and the total haze measured at zero degrees Celsius was determined. The amount of tannoids present in the samples correlates with the forced haze development. The lower the tannoid levels in the beer, the lower the amount of haze that develops. At 40 to 50 milligrams per liter of tannoids, the haze development was in the 5 to 6 EBC range, whereas at 10 to 15 milligrams per liter of tannoids, haze development was below 2 EBC. On the sensitive protein side, the data scattering is much more pronounced in a correlation between sensitive protein values and forced haze. Therefore, the tannoid test can be seen as a better indicator of predicted shelf life. This is our portable PT standard nephilometric titrator, which we can bring on site to do both haze protein and haze polyphenol measurements in real time while a trial is being performed. We can take samples during a trial and get a measurement to show how well the trial is going and also make adjustments to the dose rate of polychlor stabilizer in real time. Each test uses specific reagents for the parameter being measured. This is the PT standard stability index grid. The aim is to have balanced stability in each beer with proteins and polyphenols selectively removed in a balanced fashion. High stability for both parameters isn't always necessary. Stability is dependent on a number of factors such as seasonal temperature and whether the beer is packaged in bottles or kegs. This graph shows example measurements of haze giving proteins using the P40 reagent in the PT standard nephilometer. In this test, the amount of reagent required to start the development of haze is determined. Low consumption of reagent indicates high protein values and low colloidal stability. High consumption of reagent indicates low protein values and high colloidal stability. Similarly, this graph shows measurements of polyphenol levels using the T125 reagent in the PT standard nephilometer. In this test, the quantity of reagent required to develop a haze increase of 2 EBC is determined. Low consumption of reagent is an indication of high polyphenol levels, which leads to low colloidal stability. High consumption of reagent correlates in this case to low levels of polyphenols, leading to high colloidal stability. This inverse relationship is a result of the testing method, which is a nephilometric titration. The lower the quantity of polyphenols in the beer sample, the more reagent it takes to reach a given haze value. In our beverage lab, we have a Walton test filter that allows us to filter and stabilize beer in an oxygen-free environment. We can treat the beer with a variety of stabilizers such as PVPP or silica and pass it through a small DE leaf filter and deposit it in a receiving keg in an oxygen-free environment. This allows us to assess beer as a brewery would assess it. One thing with treating beer samples in a laboratory is that once it is exposed to the environment, oxygen pickup becomes a big factor. Oxygen has a detrimental effect on the stability of beer. Our laboratory candle filter is used in regeneration applications. We have used this system to assess improvements in the quality of our regeneration grade Polyclar Super R stabilizer. We have an additional portable instrument for on-site testing called the haze tester. This instrument is similar to the tenometer instrument with the added benefit of portability. It is typically used to measure tannoid and SASPL values. These measurements can be assessed in real time at the brewery. This slide shows some of the additional pieces of equipment available in our laboratory. The decarbonizer removes CO2 before sample analysis, a Dijox oxygen meter for measuring dissolved oxygen in beer, 
the packaged air apparatus measures CO2 volumes and packaged air in beer. The NIBEAM foam stability tester measures foam collapse rate as a function of time. A uniform cuvette of beer foam is generated using a foam flasher. The instrument has a set of movable electrodes that follow the foam as it slowly collapses. The amount of time required for the beer foam to fall 30 millimeters is used to calculate the beer foam collapse rate. Our research facilities on four continents further increase our ability to deliver industry-leading innovation and solutions. Our beverage laboratories are located in North America, Europe, India, and China. Thank you.